Uh, good morning and welcome to our No Fear Friday devotional time uh, here at Living Springs. Uh, it's uh, two of the weekly devotional times we've been doing since uh, really back before Lent. These started in addition to some others. On uh, Tuesday at 11, we share a thankful Tuesday moment, just uh, pausing to, uh, in the midst of all that's happening in our lives and in the world, to, uh, to be uh, continually uh, cognizant of God's blessings in our lives and uh, to, uh, to inoculate our uh, our spirits with that wonderful, uh, wonderful gift of gratitude that God uh, invites us to share uh, for ourselves and for others. Uh, on No Fear Friday, we've been looking at in any one of the passages from Scripture that actually has the phrase, do not be afraid, or something very similar. Uh, and we've been blessed uh, to be reminded that in these times of challenging times, uh, we need not be afraid because we have this amazing God who is with us and has uh, come to uh, experience the, the ups and downs and ins and outs of human life, even in, in human flesh through Jesus, God's Son. Uh, blessed to have Deacon Justin with us today. Uh, and sometimes uh, Deacon Lex Ann joins us as well. I was thinking about for our passage today on Sunday, uh, Deacon Justin had a wonderful message based on the gospel lesson that's from the 10th chapter of Matthew. Uh, this Sunday we have uh, a continuation of the 10th chapter of Matthew, the next passage. But, uh, but in the gospel lesson Sunday we actually had one of those verses about do not be afraid. It's, so we might go back and, uh, and hear those words again. This is from the 10th chapter of Matthew. Uh, starting with the 26th verse. Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he's been uh, telling them about uh, the mission and the difficulties they will, they will face as they go out to do the work of God's kingdom in the world. But he, now he offers them words of encouragement and says, So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. And here the, the last verse, verse 31 again. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. For these uh, No Fear Friday times, we really haven't been doing sort of deep exegetical Bible study, but rather kind of a uh, practice called dwelling in the Word, where we just... Uh, hear the words of uh, Scripture, uh, ask what caught our attention, uh, what questions were raised in our minds or hearts, and what did we hear God saying to us through those words. So, uh, Justin, you did a wonderful job reflecting on Sunday, but uh, anything else that might have struck you as we, we heard those words today? Uh, you know, I, I think about how... Um how the, sort of the act of bringing things to light and uh, proclaiming things from rooftops, it can be it can be frightening, it can be fear-inducing, but not for just one reason. So it can be, you know, yeah, what I mean? sure. It can be just it can be frightening to be the one proclaiming, and you know, and to and to shout things that you've heard whispered, yeah. and to say things that you believe are true, and so that's one half of it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the other half of it is that if you're the one who's hiding something, maybe like like I, I mean, I try to be as open and as vulnerable as I can. But you know, uh, if you've ever had a secret that you're not proud of, if you've ever had something you regret doing, having that put out in the open can be, I mean, uncomfortable is not the word for it. You know, no, it can sure, be yeah. it can right. be painful, right. frightening. Yeah, yeah. and um, and I think Jesus's message here. Is so. Um, it's it, it, there, there's no message of everything will be exposed, so watch out. You know, it's everything will be exposed, so don't be afraid. Yeah. And everything will be known. And everything will be out in the open. And of course, part of that I think is you know the writer of Matthew uh, probably had some dealings with 
folks. There were those folks, the Gnostics, you know, mm -hmm. in the early church who were kind of like prized hidden knowledge and oh, you have to know the secret, and yeah. kind of culty sort of stuff like that. Yeah. And um, and he's addressing Jesus's charge to say, you know, Jesus doesn't deal in secrets. Yeah. Um, uh, he doesn't deal in uh, hidden special knowledge that makes you more important than everybody else. Yeah. Nothing's covered that won't be uncovered. Yeah, I was thinking it, it as you were talking, it just took my mind down a path of how, I don't know, at, at times do we still try to be secretive with our faith and, mm -hmm. and keep it covered up? Or even even as a church, do we do that? And, you know, using all our churchy language and theological terms and yeah. things where Jesus was so good at just saying, hey, there's some sparrows. Let's, let, let's, yeah. let's see what they tell us about yeah. God's kingdom. Or there's, some, there's a farmer sowing some seed or whatever yeah. it is. And, and he was and, talking to those disciples. Yeah, too. So he was talking to his church. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Right. that's right. Yeah. Uh, I it caught my attention about the sparrows. We have a flock. I, I guess they're sparrows. My uh, the, the little brown birds that they, they kind of hang out in hang out in our backyard with our bird feeder. And I was watching them uh, yesterday evening about feeding time, and they had come in, and there were probably. Yeah, 15 of them I counted on a branch of a dogwood tree that's sort of dead. They come and, and light there, and then they, 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 they're, really it's pretty amazing. They, they take turns at the feeders, so, but, and, and, and I don't, I don't know what they're thinking through that. Maybe it's some other structure, but to me it's like this, this caring, taking turns away. It's like three or four will go down and eat off the feeder, and then they'll leave. The other ones won't come and push them out. They'll, they'll fly back to the branch and then a couple will take their place. It's yeah. so this way for cognizant of that, but I'm not sure. But, but it made me think about the, it's one of my favorite things to, to remind myself of in Scripture is the plural you. Yeah. Is that, that in English, those, those yous get translated. And maybe it's because we live in an individualistic Western society. Whenever we hear you in the Bible, yeah. Our tendency is almost to think me, me a singular yes. you, but Jesus is almost always using the plural you, and it's y'all. So when he's talking about y'all, don't be afraid. Y'all don't. And it, it, and it may remind me of this community of sparrows, and he's talking to the disciples. Uh, not that he, he, you know, he certainly cares for them personally as individuals, sure. but he's speaking to them as a community of disciples, uh, to that group of twelve at that point, but then. Uh, foreshadowing the group of uh, early disciples that will be formed and how does that how does God work to uh, lead us to a place of uh, of overcoming our fear because these words are addressed to community yeah. we, we all we, I know the number not just the numbers of hairs on your personal head but all your communal all hairs all like he's doing, yeah. a, he's doing a subtotal right. count rather than a and a reminder of that gift that, you know, another reason not to be afraid is because we're given that gift of community. Yeah. And uh, that uh, a community that God knows intimately. Sure. And God knows everything about us. I had a question that I want to I'm gonna right. pick your brain about. No, no. Because this is part of the reading when I was doing my sort of yeah. research and my thinking about this text. Yeah. Thinking about the one who destroys the body in hell. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, um, who that is, and I'm pretty convinced it's not God, yeah. because I'm think God's in Him. So that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. um, I just wonder, like, where Jesus is going. What do you think the context for that is? Yeah. Do you think that is some sort of uh, imagery of Satan, or do you think it is uh, some sort of other contextual, uh, contemporary reference or something like that? If you knew anything about that. Yeah, I don't, the, the, the word actually, there's the Gehenna word. And, oh, okay. And so, um, so I don't know whether it's, you know, is, is, in some ways I hear echoes of Jesus' words about, you know, where your treasure is there, your heart will be, and do not treasure things here on earth. That, yeah. that, that it's, uh, don't worry about who, who can kill the body, so it's kind right. of this, this just stay focused on this temporary shell and all that, but, but be thinking of eternal things. That, sure, that, that's sure. really what it, what I take away from it. That's yeah. not a. Uh, yeah. So there's a thing that immediately goes, "Oh no, I, oh no, my, my right. 
<laughs> my body and my soul. Yeah. Right, that this journey we're on has eternal consequences in terms yeah. of the large kingdom, not, you know, it's not much fear of the fires of hell, but, but this this mission they're going to go on is not just about, um, you know, having sandals for your feet and all this and taking care of your body, but this That's really is a mission that has eternal gravitas yeah. to it. And, and is battling and, and is going to be engaged in battles with these forces yeah. that, that, that destroy spirit and soul and, and, and create uh, create hell-like conditions yeah. Yeah. In, the, in the world mm -hmm. that, that really make a, to really batter somebody down to the point of because their soul has been destroyed. Yeah, which a lot of folks I think right now can relate to, and I think that those are a lot of the voices that we're hearing is all the stuff that people are going through. I think that uh, it, it, it's a good reminder to listen to those people and care for them. Sure. I said to, to say that it's like I'm in hell, and yeah. to say, yeah. you know, God knows you're of more value than many sparrows. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and the and the challenge of feeling a part of the flock or, or the, the flock of sparrows when yeah. we're kind of sitting alone in our in, in our bird cages, you know, <laughs> in, our, in our isolated bird cages. Yeah, know, exactly. That, that the passage says, hey, you know, you're still, God sees you in a connected way. God sees you connected to, to this community of love and mm -hmm. grace. And that, that it may be, that connectedness may be be strained right now in normal ways but it's still there it's still there you're still part of this community of love right? it's it's less like an isolated bird cage and more it reminds me of that uh place at the zoo if we're on the riverbanks oh, yeah. where you walk in and they've got all the little budgies yeah. flying around and you can hold up a little thing of yeah. sugar water and it'll come and land on you and you have to duck and yeah. I just feel like they're flying through your head. That's what it's for. Yeah. <laughs> Not so much a bird cage as a big old room yeah. full of birds. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think just do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. That, mm -hmm. uh, Jesus is telling his disciples they're going to face a lot of obstacles in this mission of doing the work of God's kingdom. But, uh, but God's, uh, I was working with our youth preparing for Grace Works in July and uh, and their theme, the youth came up with themselves, is God's got this. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so it's like persevere, God's got this, and some different variations. But uh, I think that's, I kind of hear Jesus saying that to them. You're, you're yeah. gonna, you're engaging in this mission. He's just going through all these parts about people are gonna be, uh, you know, causing trouble for you, rejecting you, filling the blank. Uh, and, and in this part he's saying, but, but don't be afraid, God's right. got this. Because you're, you're part of something eternal. You're part of some community. Or like that song I like to sing with the CDC kids. God's got the whole world in God's hands. Right. Right. Very much. So. Well, uh, thank you for joining us for this uh, for this conversation. Uh, we're, we always look forward to uh, to being together. Uh, and, and through ways such as this, reestablishing that, uh, that means of community. It's so, uh, a background noise thing. We, uh, we close with prayer. Uh, I, might, uh, I might begin. We'll pause with some silence in case there's anything that uh, you would like to lift up to God in prayer this morning. Uh, Justice, Justin might could close us with a word and lead us into the Lord's Prayer. All right. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Oh God, you have amazingly called us together to carry out your mission of hope and light and love for your world, especially in uh, times when there is much isolation and, and pain. We ask that you would uh, allow us to hear the words of Jesus being spoken for us yet today, and that you have called us together to be, uh, to be that which we cannot be on our own but that which we can be by the power of your Spirit uh, in our hearts and in our lives. We lift up to you all those concerns that are on our hearts this day, all those burdens which are in our minds, even in our bodies. 
We ask that you would bring healing and grace, reconciliation in the way that you know it needs to occur. And that you would remind us how, how much you value, how much you value us as children of God. It's so easy for us to feel alone, especially in times of struggle, uh, in times of, of trouble. Uh, we can feel cut off from our friends and our family. I ask that you would help us to remember that we're a part of a great body, of a cloud of witnesses, of a flock of sparrows that are so, so loved and cared for. and. Uh, and provided for by you. And so I ask that you would um, bring us together in your time, but also as we're apart physically, that you would bind us together in spirit, uh, that you would give us a common purpose. Uh, as things come to light, as things are being uncovered, that you would draw us together for your kingdom. And so we pray about that kingdom and the words that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. On Sunday, we, uh, we gather uh, to worship at 10 o'clock. Uh, we gather online for the full worship uh, service. So we're looking forward to that on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, we continue hearing from the 10th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. Uh, this Sunday, too, we had also committed to our uh, experiment of uh, at 8.30 having a limited uh, in-person worship opportunity on the church lawn. We'll be spaced. Everyone will need to have masks. Uh, you can also remain in your car and listen uh, listen through uh, to the to the speakers uh, that will be broadcasting across the yard. Uh, I encourage you to be wise and careful about uh, your decision to come and be part of that. Uh, with, with the resurgence of, uh, of the, uh, the coronavirus and the outbreaks uh, here, especially here in South Carolina in our area. But uh, we will be here at 8.30 on Sunday morning for that opportunity, if that would be meaningful for you. And then the, the full service will be streamed, as always, at 10 o'clock. So blessings on this weekend, and may, uh, may God uh, let you hear uh, the voice of Christ our Lord uh, saying that you are cared for and valued and need not be afraid.